I'm a looking, Caleb. Make sure you make me look good, dude. <laughs> Anyone can access this, you know, once it gets out there. <laughs> Escape. Attorney client privilege. Right. <laughs> I'm not too yeah. good at that. Try to use the coin. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, that's the uh, interview trick that I never really picked up on. I'm I've, I've been, I've been, I've been criticized many times on that one. Really? Yeah, because I've done, lately done a few interviews, and people are like that's they want you to use exactly that. Yeah. So like the f a few times I've done it, I haven't, I haven't done that. Mm -hmm. I'm used to just answering questions. We give the opposite instruction: just to answer the damn question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you could use one word to describe Rebecca, what would it be? One word to describe Rebecca. I think I need more than one word to describe Rebecca, but since you're limiting me to one, uh, I think I would say grace, I think is a good word to describe her. She just has a very graceful, calm, confident presence, and I think that that comes through the second you meet her and stays that way, no matter how much time you spend with her. That would be my word. That was money. Can we just do it again? Just because that truck is really Sure, loud. yeah. Great. Do it again? Sorry, I know. I'm not scripted, man. You want me to do that again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was good, just for safety. All right, for safety's sake, um, to use one word to describe Rebecca, I think, I think I would prefer to have more than one word to describe Rebecca. But since you're limiting me to one word, I think the one word I would, I would choose would be grace. Uh, she, her presence ha has always been just one of very calm, elegance, uh, confidence. And I, I think that you, you see that about Rebecca from the first second you meet her uh, all the way through hours that you spend with her. And I've had the privilege, I guess, or the luck of doing both. I've met her in very short spurts and I've gotten a chance to spend a lot of time with her. Uh, so I think that's a pretty fitting, fitting word to describe her, Grace. Couldn't use it on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what has ISP meant to you and your family? Oh, that's funny because I, I just was having coffee with my wife before I came here, right up the street at Court Street Grocer and saying, and saying to her, boy, how, how lucky we, we've been in some of the choices that we've made, some of the big life choices that we've made. So like when you reel back and think of your big life choices, you certainly think of your marriage, and that, that, that's a big one for me, but then quite quickly you realize children, and then immediately it's where are you going to send your children to school, and you, know, you want the best for your kids. And we, so we were just having this conversation and saying, geez, how, how incredibly lucky we ha we've been to be, to sort of run into ISB, in part because of Caleb and Ivana, who sort of uh, turned us on to seeing this school. And, and to know sitting here now, so many years later, so I think it's about six years later now, and to see how happy, how well adjusted, how smart my kids are. Uh, and a lot of that came, well, all of it really, I think comes from ISB and everything that it's provided. So just to think of the big decisions that you make in life, and obviously I, I can't think of too many bigger ones than what you're gonna do for your children, and to know that we've, we've been here the whole time, ISB is just so intertwined to your everyday existence. Every second of every day when you're walking around in your own head, or taking a run, you're thinking, wow, what do I do for my, you know, your big life decisions, it's generally what you think. You know, where are we gonna live? Who am I gonna marry? Uh, what am I gonna do for my kids as you get older? So to, to remove the, the stress uh, or the confusion or the thought process of schooling for your kids at such a young age and to know that you and have such confidence that they're in such the right place for them, it, it, it means everything. I, I just think you, you sleep great at night. What could be better than that, right? Maybe you should just use that bar. <laughs> I go to sleep great. I wake up fantastic in large part because of where my kids are going to school. My favorite memory of Rebecca. I think two, two memories of mine stand out uh, uh, with Rebecca. One is the, the very first time I met her when she interviewed us uh, to, you know, to be able to come into the school. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, like I, I haven't been interviewed. I, I, I've never applied for a job. 
<laughs> never, you know, I didn't apply for schools in, in that manner. I, I never sat down when somebody was actually interviewing me for, uh, for me to sort of get acceptance to some kind of club, I guess, or, or, or school. So that, that first memory of her thinking, oh my gosh, what, what is this woman who Im immediately struck me as intelligent and, or, you know, and confident and, and uh, uh, graceful, obviously. I said, what is, what is she going to think of me? Uh, and I remember very quickly in the conversation, she, she demonstrated her sense of humor immediately and put me at ease. So it made me very, very comfortable right off the bat. Uh, and, I, and I felt like there was a very nice connection quickly. The, the other thing that stands out for me is, I don't know, maybe the, my second or third year here at one of the uh, functions at, you know, at the spring benefit. And Rebecca asked me if I wanted to MC, <laughs> you know, for the auctions and stuff. I said, are you serious? You know, I'll, I'll do it, but does that mean, do I have to be filtered? In other words, are you going to be okay with whatever comes out of my mouth? Which could really be anything. And, and Rebecca was, abso was absolutely, that's why I want, I think she even said something like, that's why I want you to MC. And then when we did it that night, it was over in Gowanus at some place, and I had a microphone, and I remember uh, MCing and, th and, I, and thinking that whatever I was saying was, was fairly funny and entertaining and helping to raise money. But unbeknownst to me, nobody could really hear it because of the acoustics in the place. But Rebecca, who was standing next to me, could. And there were a lot of jokes or riffs on her and the administration or just normal stuff. And I just remember seeing her face. And, and she, not only was she enjoying it and laughing, extremely comfortable with it. And I think she was the only one uh, that, that enjoyed the, the performance. Little did I know it was because nobody could hear it. Otherwise, it would have been fantastically big success. So I think that was the other thing that, that, that just sort of sticks out from her. Oh, to the camera. What would I say to thank you? To thank you. Answer that way, and then this way. Well, yeah. Say, say thank you. I would say thank you. This is. A, I would say thank you. Yeah. So yeah, one to Danielle, and then again, one right to me. Okay. What would I say? What would I say to thank Rebecca if I had the chance? But I think I have the chance, right? I can go. I can go up to her and thank her, can I? <laughs> um, I guess, boy. I think you think, I think to thank her, uh, it would be one selfish thank you and one so, sort of more greater good thank you. I, I think in a selfish sense, it would be, wow, thank you for, you know, for letting me into your school, for allowing me to, to, to be a part of it. And, and I think that's a big one because there was certainly choices to be made. Uh, and that would be sort of the selfish one for me. But I think the, the better one would really be the thank you, the greater good thank you. And that's something that I think about a lot, like doing things for the greater good, for, the, for more. Because what Rebecca did, and having just the courage to start out a school uh, with her own kids and, and in her own vision, was really aimed more towards a greater good, towards not, not clearly not just affecting her kids, that, that, that's for sure, uh, or even the small group of kids that they had in the beginning and that's now grown to, you know, to about 340. I, I still think I would thank her, not just for helping all of these 300 kids and more that have passed through, but it's something that exponentially is being exported out. So it's really a greater good thank you. The more, the more of these kids that we create, the more of this philosophy that we put out there to more kids, the more that we get it out there, we're just gonna have a better place and a better chance, not only in Brooklyn and in New York and in the United States, but really globally. And so you, ha you have to start somewhere in a, in a small place. I, I try to start my own home, you know, teaching my own two kids something and hope that they, that, that sort of, like like a ripple in a lake that the, you know, the concentric circles and it sort of just goes out and out and out. I guess Rebecca threw a pebble in the water a long time ago and those circles just continue to reverberate out further and further and further. And for me personally, I would thank her for what my own kids have a benefit of. But for a greater good, those, those circles, those, those waves that she's made, they're going to go on and reach more and more and more people. And, and I, I think there's great importance to that, far more than I can maybe uh, achieve just in my own space. And so I really appreciate that and have a lot of respect and admiration for somebody that can not only take on that challenge, but get it to this point. It's, it's, it's incredible. So I shouldn't be the only one thanking her. I think there's going to be a lot of people out there that don't even realize the effect she's had uh, on people and in and, and far-reaching places. They'll be, they should line up as well. <laughs> How's that? That was awesome. How do you speak that? Yeah, no, no, no. This is just how you speaking to her. So. Now I'm supposed to speak to you now, Rebecca?
Three. You know what? <laughs> I'm supposed to go right to the camera now. Three. Okay, Rebecca, I'm, this, is, this is the part where I'm supposed to come thank you. I think I've thanked you uh, enough face-to-face, uh, uh, -face, but now talking to a camera to thank you. Well, uh, in thinking about what things I would thank you for, I, I guess I thought of it in two different ways. One, sort of uh, selfishly or maybe myopically in my own family, you know, thanking you for what you've done for just my children and, and my family because I, the results are just so obvious and, you know, bringing us into your school and into this sort of family network. But more importantly, I think it's, a, it's sort of a, a more global reach, uh, you know, or a more greater good thank you because I'm a big believer in the things that we do can have a, la a larger effect on people, sort of like throwing a pebble into a, a, a calm lake and seeing how far those circles, how far those waves go out. So some of the things that you've created here by having the courage to start something out, uh, not just for your own children, but for a greater good type of thing, uh, it's gonna have an effect on a lot more people than just your own children or my own children. And we, we may never even really know the effect as to how far those circles go, how many people get affected by what we're doing at ISB, which you, you help to instigate, and how, what effect that's going to have on people, not only in, in, let's say, in Brooklyn, and then in New York City, and New York State, or the United States, but just globally. These kids are going to go out there, they're going to take what they've, had, what they've learned here, and they're going to pass it on, or demonstrate it to other kids, and then maybe to their kids. And so the effect of what you started, just like a pebble in a water, and the, the, how far that's going to go, it's going to be very, very hard to measure. So I, I think there's probably a lot of other people out there in the world at some point that maybe if they traced it back and said, well, who do I have to thank for all of this, for all of these amazing people that are going to come out or the thought process that these people are going to have based upon what they were taught here? That, that's going to trace back to you. So it'll be a nice genealogy that maybe uh, you can have. And uh, maybe somebody could do a project on that in 30 or 40 or 50 years because I think that that's, that's the effect that you're going to have. So. I thank you for me and for my small family and for a lot of other people. That's all I can give you. <laughs> How's that? <clears throat> Mike, thank you. It's beautiful. Good luck editing. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for coming. No, no, listen, thanks so much for having me. I hope that's good.